Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green mutate deck titled Demolition Druids as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And you can become a Patreon supporter yourself for as little as $2 per month, which works out to about $0.08 cents per video. So that's one of the best ways you can support the channel and is very much appreciated. And today's deck is actually more of a land destruction deck than you might think, thanks to the recent addition of Sawtusk Demolisher in the format, which was added in the latest anthology expansion, a 6-mana six 6-6 six six beast with Trample that mutates for just 3 and a green, and whenever this creature mutates, destroy target a non-creature permanent, and its controller creates a 3-3 three three green beast creature token, so we can pretty consistently mutate Demolisher on turn 3 in this deck, thanks to our early acceleration, and then destroy one of the opponent's lands and have a 6-6 six six creature in play, which most decks will struggle to deal with right away, and then on the subsequent turn we can mutate once again, destroy more lands, potentially multiple lands in the same turn, and then the opponent will have a very hard time recovering, and then eventually we can also mutate a Pouncing Shore Shark, which whenever it mutates we may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand, so this is a perfect answer to the beast tokens we're generating, so each time we mutate we can bounce a beast, opponent gets an additional beast, but in the end we will come out on top, especially once we mutate Auspicious Starix and start generating a ton of extra permanence. So that's our basic game plan, have some early acceleration thanks to our early druids, and then mutate Demolisher to get the opponent's lanes and try and keep them out of the game. So let's take a look at the entire deck list here, starting out with our druids, where we have the full playset of Lenor Elves, as well as the full playset of Paradise Druid, which also has Hexproof as long as it's untapped, making it a great target for our Santos Demolisher Mutate. If we can keep the creature untapped, it's going to be much harder for the opponent to interact with. And then we also have the full playset of Polywalk Symbiote, 2 mana for a 1-3 frog, saying each creature spell we cast costs 1 generic mana less to cast if it has mutate, so that also includes mutate costs, and whenever we cast a creature spell, if it has mutate we get to draw a card and then discard a card, so that can also help us find more mutate creatures. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Sea Dasher Octopus, which we're mostly interested in mutating for 1 and a blue, but it's also a 2-2 creature with flash, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, we also get to draw a card, so that can find more fuel for the mutate engine. Then we've got two copies of Gem Racer, not the full playset since we have Santos Demolisher which can also deal with artifacts and enchantments, and whenever this creature mutates we can destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls, also just a 4-4 creature with reach and trample, so just mutating this onto a smaller elf can also be quite powerful. And then we've got a full playset of Migratory Greathorn, mutates for just 2 and a green, and whenever this creature mutates we get to search our library for a basic land card to put on the battlefield tapped. And then we've got a full set of Dreamtail Heron, 5 mana for a 3-4 flyer, but mutates for just 3 and a blue, and whenever this creature mutates we also get to draw a card. Then we've got our full set of Pouncing Shore Shark, as well as the full set of Auspicious Terex, which mutates for 5 and a green, which is why having 3 copies of Castle Garenbrick in the mana base is so useful, since it makes it easier to mutate our Starix. And whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated and put those all on the battlefield, so that can be quite explosive, especially if we mutate onto the same creature multiple times. And then of course we've got our full set of Santos Demolisher, which could also destroy our own lands just to make 3-3 beast tokens if we need the additional board presence. And then going over the mana base, we've got 6 basic forests and 1 basic island that we can search up with our migratory greathorn, 3 copies of Castle Garenbrick, which is great with our auspicious Terex, and then 12 dual lands with 4 copies of Hinterland Harbor, 4 copies of Breeding Pool, and 4 of the blue-green pathway. And then we also get to free roll Umori, the collector, as our companion. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We're missing Santos Demolisher, but we've got a fine mutate plan in the meantime with Symbiote as an extra card draw engine to find our Demolisher as well as Dreamtail Heron. So we'll have to decide whether to play Paradise Root or Symbiote. Kind of depends what deck our opponent's on. I guess a colorless deck they're not going to have a whole lot of interaction for my creatures, so I think I prefer Symbiote to get our card draw engine going. Traveler's Amulets, okay. Ooh, there's the Molisher. Now we still don't have an extra lane to go with it. 
But it is tempting to play Paradise Druids just to have that hexproof insurance just in case. Now I'll still go with the symbiote. And then hope to pick up a line next turn. Amulet sacrificed to search up a basic land. It's gonna be an island. Into Fountain of Renewal. Alright, did not pick up a land, but we did pick up Sea Dasher Octopus, which I can mutate for single mana. And then an elf is fine. I guess we'll get rid of Paradise Roots since we've got Lunar Elves instead. Alright. So next turn we can mutate Demolisher. And start taking out the opponent's blue source. Blast zone on one. Can't quite be activated. And an aspiring statuary. So there's something to be said for taking out statuary instead of their land. But without an island, the opponent cannot really make use of the improvised mechanic. So I think I'm still down to demolish here. And then, I don't think this needs to be a Sterix game. And a second symbiote could still be useful for double spelling. And we might as well attack. Alright. So next turn we can mutate a whole bunch. Start bouncing tokens. And we'll maybe take out the statuary as well. Traveler's Amulet can search up an island. So they can still make use of statuary, perhaps. Alright, that's gonna be a Psy Master Thopterist. Do they have any zero mana artifacts as well? They don't. Alrighty, so we've got a ton of options now. I'm kind of liking second symbiote first. And then mutate the shark. And just keep as many mutate creatures as possible. So we'll bounce either Psy or the beast. I guess we can bounce the beast for now. Take out islands. And then mutate Great Horn as well. Bounce the beasts. And we'll take out Statuary. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're gonna be out of lands pretty soon. No shortage of mutate creatures thanks to double symbiote. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Sadly, we cannot keep any hands without one of our cheaper enablers. And this one we can keep, although we're light on mutate creatures, so there's the risk that we don't find additional mutate creatures in our hand. It won't do anything powerful, but you know, we've got a nice start with Elves and Paradise Druid. So we'd love to find Demolisher. Or maybe something like uh, Sterix to eventually mutate. Could go for Octopus to draw a card. Or we can play Paradise Druid to develop our mana. Kind of like the Octopus plan here, to be honest. Alright, Shark gives us a bit of interaction. Opponent on bands and cultivates. Alright, so our opponent's ramping, which is going to make it pretty difficult to lock them out with a land destruction plan. So, probably just going to attack for two, play Paradise Druids, take it from there. Alright, 
All right. Hope they don't have a sweeper here. It's going to be a Nissa. Now we can bounce the islands and Demolisher can take out Nissa. So that was a good draw. I guess we demolish first. Opponent gets beasts. Can't quite mutate a Shore Shark, but I could mutate Gem Razor if I wanted to. Which is probably okay. And we'll take out our White Source. And then next turn we'll do some damage control with Bouncing Shore Shark. And we can keep Demolisher on defense. Alrighty. Opponent's got a Tails End to counter the land destruction trigger. Fair enough. Probably just put Umar in hand as opposed to running out some small dorks. Narset prevents card draw. So we would like to take out Narset if we get the chance. As we see, Nother cultivates. But they are missing an extra land. So we want to take out Narset before we try to mutate Heron. Although that's going to be tricky on this board. Since they can just double block my Demolisher. Although, let's see here. Could also use Demolisher to take out Narset. And if we stack those triggers properly, we might be able to destroy Narset before the draw trigger from Dreamtail Heron. So I guess that's one way to get around Narset's ability. And then with the extra draw, we can maybe find more mutate creatures to start destroying more lands as well. So yeah, we were up against a ramp deck with Nissa, but we still managed to eventually enact our land destruction plan, which is quite nice. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable-ish hand. We don't have any play on turn two, but uh, if we draw one extra land and Elf survives, we can start doing some stuff. So we'll try it. And then I guess on turn two I can just put Omari in hand, just so we spend our mana in some way. Turn one Dread Wanderer, so mono black aggro. All right, still need an extra land here. Turn to Scrap Heap Scrounger. All right, picked up a C Dasher so I could mutate and then draw. It's probably the play in the hopes of hitting a land and a Scrap Heap can block. All right, so next turn we can deploy a more expensive mutate creature or maybe play Omori. Opponent's playing green as well, so it might be a Phyrexian Obliterator fight deck. Although, Shore Shark's a pretty good answer. And then I guess we'll bounce Spawn of Mayhem here. And then next turn we can mutate Sterix, perhaps. Demolisher, also nice pickup. Let's see if they have Obliterator. Never got a Primal Might to fight a Shore Shark, as expected. Hit us for eight. 
so I guess Umori is the play now. And then gotta hope they don't have another fight spell. Spawn of Mayhem will have to be bounced, otherwise it's gonna deal one damage to us. So, bounce, and then I could still mutate Octopus to get an extra mutate trigger. I'll keep the 4-5. And then we can even attack here. All right. And there's Obliterator and a Dread Wonder. Luckily, they didn't have another fight spell at the ready. So Symbiote seems kind of free here. And then this mutates for double green, this mutates for four mana, this mutates for two mana. So we'll start here. And then ditch Paradise Roots. All right, and then we still get to mutate Gem Racer, which can bounce Dread Wanderer, draw an extra card, and then I guess we can ditch one more card. But yeah, put and packs it in. They maybe could have still tried to top deck a Primal Might to go Fraction Obliterator or Primal Might, but yeah, they would have been at four and the next turn we could have easily killed them in a multitude of ways. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. No Santa's Demolisher, but we get to start with turn one elves into Symbiote and then we can mutate pretty much any creature we find. Opponent with a turn one Crawling Barons. So this could be a colorless artifact ramp deck with turn to Maze Mind Tomb, which we can also destroy with Gem Racer here if we wanted to, which seems like a decent idea, although we could get Symbiote in play first. And then mutate next turn. Could even play a second symbiote and then still mutate gem razor. So we don't mind if the opponent has more artifacts for us to destroy here. Blast zone into Power Stone Shard. And C Dasher Octopus to draw, so I guess we can mutate Gem Racer and then still mutate Octopus to destroy both artifacts. I guess I'm tapping too much mana here. And then I guess I can mutate onto the elf itself, although maybe Symbiote's a better target. And then discard one Symbiote. All right. Destroy Maze Mind Tome, and our opponent concedes to Gem Racer blowing up all their artifacts. Sweet, on to the next one. All 
All right, we're on the draw with a great opening hand. We've got our Paradise Druid and Symbiote for cost reduction into an early Demolisher. And we even have the Shore Shark to bounce the tokens afterwards, so... We've got all the pieces we need. Opponent with Swamp into Crawling Barons. Kick things off with a Paradise Druid here. Just in case they had some spot removal. And then hope they tap out so they can't destroy my... Demolisher once the Paradise Druid becomes tapped. Can blow up that swamp. Elspeth's Nightmare is fine, doesn't deal with Paradise Druids. And then now we'll go after their swamp. And then they'll need a pretty specific answer here, like swamp into Heartless Act. And then next turn, Paradise Druid will be untapped, so it'll have Hexproof, we can mutate Shark, bounce the token, destroy more lands, take it from there. So they've got a one turn window to get out of this mess. And our opponent doesn't have the answer, they know what's incoming, and scoops it up, so yeah, it's just that easy. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. No blue mana means I probably got a mulligan here. This is better. So turn to Paradise Druids. This might be a game where we go Paradise Druid, Mutate, Great Horn, Mutate, Sterix. So we'll ditch Octopus. Opponent with a Fable Passage. Shore Shark gives us a bit of interaction. So it looks like a ramp deck with Wolf of Haven. Alright, if we can find Demolisher to destroy that forest, that would be quite juicy. We also have Gem Racer to destroy enchantments. And risk the redeemed. All right, so some sort of token stack. I guess we'll still mutate Great Horn for now. And then I will stay back just in case they've got some removal here. Mirari's Wake. And there's Gem Racer just in time here to destroy Mirari's Wake. Otherwise, that would have been a problem. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Mirari's Wake plus Risk the Redeemed is a pretty strong combo, but Gem Racer to the rescue, although Demolisher also would have been quite nice. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. So we'll need one extra land to mutate Demolisher on turn three here. But Double Octopus can also potentially be played after Symbiote to get us a bunch of triggers. Steam Vents untapped into Witching Well. All right, hopefully they can't destroy Symbiote, otherwise we might be in trouble. The Mutate deck definitely relies on its early mana creature to survive. Opponent keeps both on top. There is an argument for playing this as a blue source. In case I want to double mutate or hard cast Octopus with the one mana discount next turn. Opponent on Jeskai. So it could be some sort of Graveyard Synergy deck, as we see Diligent Excavator. So yeah, this might be a deck using the Escape card that lets them play cards out of the Graveyard. And then, for now, I guess the Mulsher is the play. And... Probably don't need Paradise Druid, although I guess I can play Paradise Druid alongside Mutating an octopus. And one Sterix can go. And I guess white is more likely to have answers to my 6-6 six, six than red. So 
So eventually need to find a pouncing shore shark to manage the beast tokens, but for now the land destruction is in full effect. Stone coil just to mill a couple cards. There we see Emery, Chromatic Sphere. But no second land, and there's Pouncing Shore Shark as a final nail in the coffin. Don't need a second Demolisher, even though it can destroy their artifacts as well. Bounce the beasts, destroy the land. And I don't know of many decks that can win the game without any lands in play. And our opponent agrees and packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand looks quite nice. Turn to Paradise Druids, hopefully pick up a third land so we can demolish right away. If not, we can mutate Greathorn to get an extra land. So far we haven't seen a whole lot of auspicious Terex in action, since our opponents have been conceding before we get to that point. Opponent with a Vampire of Dire Moon, so maybe some sort of Death Touch Synergy deck with Finn the Fangbearer. Alright. So we could see some sort of fight spell take out my Demolisher if I mutate it here. So there is an argument for mutating Great Horn first. Although that does give the opponent the opportunity to play a couple more Death Touch creatures. Which also has its disadvantage, so I think I'm all in here. And then next turn we should be able to stabilize. Right, it's gonna be a tapped blood crypt. We are up to six poison. But now Elves is an extra blocker, potentially. So, how do I want to sequence? I guess I can play Elves, mutate Greathorn, and keep Demolisher on defense. And then Elves can trade for Vampire of Dire Moon. Alright, it's probably time for Auspicious Sterix now. And then we just gotta hit some permanents. Could also destroy my own land just to get an extra 3-3 beast, but that seems cowardly. Alright, we hit some creatures, that's good. So the defenses are up, and now we should be able to take over. Opponent does keep hitting their land drops at least. So... I guess I can block like this and then double block Finn. Take three. And an Arnhem Renegade as a 2 3. We've got more mutates. And our opponent explodes. <laughs> Alright. Close one here against the Death Touch deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and I see turn 2 Paradise Root, turn 3 Demolisher mutated, so I'm keeping. Botanical Sanctum into Gilded Goose. Don't really like seeing mana creatures on the other side of the battlefield, since that mitigates some of our land destruction aspect. But let's see what they ramp out. Nothing just yet.
opponent can make another food token, which they didn't, which is a little strange. And it's gonna be a Seagate Stormcaller into Neoform, so I guess we're just dead here. Which is why they didn't bother making a food token. It all makes sense now. Alright, it's been a while since I've been comboed off by the Neoform deck on turn 3. So their opponent gets a bunch of dual caster mages, copying Neoform. And then they get a couple clone effects, like Glasspool Mimic to copy dual caster mage to do the same. And their last three drops they search up are typically Tuck Tuck Rubble for to give the entire team haste, as well as Comod Celebrant to give them an extra attack step, which is usually enough to win most games. So yeah, we've got a turn three Demolisher at the ready, but yeah, Historic can be a brutal format. Sometimes you get comboed on turn three. It doesn't happen very often, but uh, this is a good example. So there's the Rubble Fort, and there's Comod Celebrant, which will be exerted. Alright, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand looks quite good. Turn 2 Symbiote into turn 3 Demolisher. Symbiote helps us find Pouncing Shore Shark and take it from there. So just gotta hope Symbiote survives. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Zalfron Void. That's usually a good sign, since I don't tend to have a whole lot of interaction. Plus we have Gem Racer for additional artifact destruction. Fountain to gain two. Into Guardian Idol. And it's go time here. Could also go with Gem Racer first, but it's cheaper to mutate Gem Racer later. Destroy Fountain. Can attack for six. And then next turn, Gem Racer will blow up a land and an artifact. And then we can also play a Lanor Elves. Maze Mine Tomb. That's okay. Could decide to attack first before we give them an extra 3 3 blocker. Octopus also excellent here, so I could mutate both if I wanted to. Alright, so we'll start by attacking. Although, if I attack first, I guess I don't get to Gem Racer to destroy both artifacts. But I do get to maybe draw a card with Octopus. Yeah, I guess I value the card draw more than destroying an extra artifact for now. So I'll mutate this for one mana, thanks to Symbiote. Destroy a land. Draw a card from Octopus. Now oh, they didn't even see the Gem Racer, which was about to destroy an extra artifact here. So yeah, this blue-green mutate deck is pretty brutal. And I'm kind of surprised Demolisher got added in Anthology, since they typically shy away from cheap land destruction effects, and we can easily mutate Demolisher on turn 3, and then it's also a repeatable land destruction spell at that, so a bit baffled by that decision, but if you're a fan of land destruction, this might be your best bet in Historic right now. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.